We realised that things were much more advanced. Nowhere else had these facilities at the time. The EDSAC was responsible, if you like, or supported researchers, or went as far as getting Nobel Prizes. Researchers found that it was possible to solve problems quite beyond the expectations of the time. The EDSAC was a general purpose stored program machine, and that's very fundamental because computers today essentially do anything. EDSAC was built in what at the time was called the Mathematical Laboratory of Cambridge University. The building was the anatomy department. It's famous for the fact that the only elevator it had in it was, was for horizontal people rather than vertical people. People looking for the laboratory would be told to look for the green door, which was the only obvious door along that street. It was set up to provide assistance to people in other departments to help them do their research. The EDSAC project was led by Morris Wilkes, who was head of the Mathematical Laboratory. Morris Wilkes was very formal. He um, always called me Miss Blackler. He was quite intense in a way. He was intellectually very determined. Morris's mission was to change the world. Now in those days, all they had were what we call hand calculators. Little machines like this, which you turned to handle, and it did the sums. I was looking at the structure of stars and it was very difficult to be accurate with a large calculation. Morris really wanted to do something for all those researchers who were sort of stuck away turning handles. Morris had heard about machines being built in the States. They were electronic, therefore you knew that you could build a large machine and make it work. He came back from the States on the Queen Mary, and while on the Queen Mary, he said to himself, I now know how to build a computer, and sketched out the design. And when he got back to Cambridge, he said, said right fellows, we're going to build it. The core team consisted of Morris Wilkes with his engineer, Bill Rennick. Bill was the guy who really built it, as it were, with his hands, I think, uh, together with the technicians. Then, of course, there are research students, the most famous of which is David Wheeler. When I first met him, I was so impressed by his intelligence and ability to write a programme. He invented the concept of subroutine. EDSAC's subroutine library was used by programmers to write their programmes to save them effort. It was all part of why EDSAC was important, because it made programming easier. Wilkes's memoirs say that suddenly it started to work. They were taken by surprise. It must have taken some time to suddenly, suddenly click in and it did on the 6th of May 1949. It suddenly worked. This is the booklet that you needed in order to learn to use ed one and I remember taking it to the library and working through it in a day. The first thing you had to do was you get the, the student or user or the researcher to decide what problem they want to solve and to write a program. Sit down, write down the instructions to go into the computer. All the programs were punched onto paper tape and during the day there were operators employed. My job was the senior computer operator on EDSAC. We would take these jobs one by one and run them in the computer and sometimes they wouldn't even read in because they were that wrong. They discovered that writing programs was a very error-prone thing but once it was right you could then run it again and again and again and again very fast. Monday was always a bad day for computers because they'd been turned off at the weekend. I wouldn't go so far as to say that it wasn't worth running programs on a Monday morning, but I think if he wanted to nip out and do an errand, it was probably a good time to go. The computer was available to any member of the university. Now in the old days, people who built computers were rather wary of users because they might spoil it. Morris said, no, come and use it. He was very open. Those of us who were doing large projects were allowed to run the machine in the evening and overnight. And it was quite an achievement if you could keep the machine running all night and hand it over to the engineers in the morning. You have to realise that machines in those days were extremely unreliable. One night the machine broke down and David was there and sort of said, well, let's go and see a movie. And that's when we got close. We were married in 1957.
Very little of EDSAC survives. When the machine was finished with, they needed the space for its successor, and so they had to move everything out. We've now decided to build a replica of EDSAC as a lasting legacy to the pioneering work by Wilkes and his team. When Morris retired, we established a tradition in the computer lab, and that is to show anybody who retires the green door behind which they worked as members of the mathematical laboratory, as it was called then. Morris Wilkes, of course, was one of the first to be shown the door, uh, and all the senior people after that. We had a little ceremony, and little speeches were being made, and at the right moment, a couple of colleagues walked in with this huge green door and said to Morris, we're showing you the door. And so we left him holding the door for a few moments and he looked a little confused. And then the engineers came and rescued him and, and carried the door away. The green door is in our coffee room and uh, has a plaque on it, which lists the names of all those who were shown the door. Pioneers, and especially David Wheeler and Morris Wilkes, should be remembered for being particularly brilliant people who changed the world. Those years were very productive, very interesting, and very exciting. These computers were viewed as something special. Nobody knew that they were going to take off and that how valuable they would be. A student course on programming and using computers was introduced in Cambridge in 1953 and the very first book on computer programming was the book describing how to program EDSAC. You've got a smartphone now, would you have believed? Ten years ago? But then that's the exciting thing about computing. It surprises you all the time.